Hi, everybody. So I want to start off with this research paper because this research paper is like um, what gave me the impetus to build this out. And this research paper is called Topological Beaming of Light Proof of Concept Experiment. And then everything within this research paper is uh, stuff I've already experimented with and already know overall, right? But it does something when like you just have validation behind what you're doing right like I can't I mean I understand that and like um, I, I, I can't like understate that enough how big of an impact that is right uh, and then like if you pay close attention to physics and especially within quantum physics you're seeing lots and lots of breakthroughs recently like I, I would say there's more breakthroughs within the last year within quantum physics than the last 20 or 50 before that if you're paying attention like I mean just literally pay attention right uh, and the reason being is uh, we, we can compute these things in different ways than we could before and we're coming up with calculations and, and, and ways to calculate that we couldn't before. Um, and then so how exactly are we doing that? It's with the utilization and, and, and with the help of AI flat out. But I mean, to me, it, like it's, um, where the, the thing to, to highlight is is that we're making experiments, right? It doesn't matter where the experiments are coming from specifically. Like, I don't think that a majority of people care. <laughs> they care more about, like, the actual experiments themselves and the results of the experiments themselves, right? Um, and then so this experiment is very straightforward. And if you've been, again, paying attention to quantum mechanics and quantum physics breakthroughs, this shouldn't be news to you overall, but it might be for some people. And then so the bottom line is is that they prove that there's a topological structure to light uh, that essentially within light itself, it, there's a shape, and there's shapes within it, and that these shapes are governed uh, by, it turns out, <laughs> geometry and resonance, right? Huh. I wonder where where I come up with these things and, and, and um, like, harmonize towards them, right? Um, but then, so, <laughs> within this, uh, essentially, what they prove out is that this structure exists, and they give, like, a whole bunch of mathematical equations, calculations, their experiments, um, as to how exactly to access this structure, what it looks like, the simulations of their experiments, their topology, uh, a whole bunch of, of frameworks uh, involved within this, right? Um, and then, so, again, like, the, the best ways to measure this structure are resonance, and that's the, the wave functions that you're seeing here, right? These, these waves that this resonance, um, and then heat maps, which you're, you're seeing next to it, like that min-max, and then so uh, these things, like, I, I can't state this enough, right? Like, uh, if you look at these two concepts individually, wave functions and heat maps, they uh, do apply to, like, diffusion mechanics, and then, which would then um, apply to thermodynamics, but if you take that a step further and you extrapolate it, they also apply to fluid dynamics. I can't highlight that enough, and then just pointing that out, right? Um, but so, uh, all of these things combine to just more and more unification of physics overall is the bottom line, like, like what we're getting closer to, right, within all of this. But so within this, they essentially prove there's topological shape to light, um, and then they outline how exactly to access and measure and, and do things with the topological shape. So, okay, cool. This is 100% open source license, MIT license, this whole entire concept of TRBE Zyra, beam encoding system from binary to symbolic semantic multiplexing and then this particular notebook that we're going to go over explores a complete and progressive implementation of the topological resonant beam encoding or trbe combined with the zyra style semantic embedding systems it demonstrates how structured light beams can encode not just binary data but high dimensional symbolic information from language models transmitting and decoding meaning via geometry resonance and frequency modulation essentially we're going to we're going to read and write to light flat out, uh, or a simulation of light in this instance. Um, but so I'm just showing you that it 100% it and 1 million percent can be done. We're starting off, it's just uh, basing it off of research and the research that has been, it, again, just pay attention to, to advancements in quantum mechanics. Uh, and you'll see this is all grounded in research, right? So core components, the binary topological encoding mechanism or the TRBE, it encodes raw binary strings. So in this instance, I'm going to code like, hello world, good morning, a uh, few other phrases into the Dirac mass modulated beam fields, which is what this whole entire paper is about, right? That so this method uh, here is one million percent from this research paper, and then it applies harmonic modulation to simulate the uh, again this other the uh, Jackie Rebuy topological states. So like their the, their whole like these first two like the the whole 
encoding mechanism is, I mean, flat out the bottom line from this research paper, right? Uh, I'm taking their method um, within this that's published within this uh, and then applying it and then putting it in here uh, and then putting my encoder on it, right? So then it's it's their decoder for or their, their encoder plus my encoder. And then my encoder uh, embeds symbolic vectors from more to vec, uh, encodes them, which is not my, <laughs> mine, but then uh, encodes them into spatially resonant harmonic beam fields via projection matrices, where that's the Rosira comes in, uh, and then decodes via pseudo inverse projections with high fidelity using cosine similarity comparisons. Again, that's where Zyra comes in. Uh, and then we have the symbolic multiplexing architecture, which I'll show you here. We can, we're able to split the beam. So my first result was, can I actually do it? Uh, and then can I do it in a, a, a actual beam because light moves very fast, right? Um, and this, I'll walk you through. And then can I do it in two, uh, like split the beam? Can I split the beam again? Um, and then so I'll, I'll show you the, the uh, logic and, and go all the way through this here, right? So first implementation is the most basic implementation. Can I do it? Hello world. Uh, and then so the original message is hello world. And then we encode into encode it into binary. And then the result is hello world. <laughs> this uh, this first experience experiment here. The uh, problem with this experiment is, is that this like basically assumes that um, light is moving at zero miles per hour. So if light were uh, completely frozen, this method would be super easy. I'd be done here uh, and then we could just move on, right? Um, but light doesn't move at zero miles per hour in any environment except for like the one that uh, physicists were just able recently to do like, like a week ago. Um, but so beyond that, um, light, light is the speed of light, right? And that's generally what, what it travels at. <laughs> and then so uh, within that, we, we need something to actually do that. And then this is my very first test within this is, is trying to, to get. Um, so what happens if we're, we take that result and then we actually try to get it into um, light while it's moving <laughs> very quickly and very fast, right? Um, and then this is the first result of that. And then if you're not paying attention, this is actually like um, a very, very bad test. Like the closer to one, better the better. So the fact that the uh, similarity for hello is zero point uh, zero three is very bad, uh, and then the point that the similarity for world is negative point one zero is very very bad uh, because that means that it's uh, verging on and starting to be orthogonal uh, to the actual word, like so, meaning that like it's almost the opposite uh, uh, and starting to have like negative impact on the actual encoding. You can see that here, right, as the the, the coded word. So uh, very bad initial test there, um, and then so very good initial test if uh, light was again frozen right if light didn't move but so taking in that variable that extra variable okay we, we have some more work to do uh, and then so that's what I do here right and then so essentially I, I just I beef up the the math within this beef up the amount of matrix layers brief beef up the I, I create a projection matrix itself and then like um, beef up the math within inside of that and then the projection matrix gets us to like what you see here right like so it's essentially it creates like in my mind, uh, we'll call it like a diffusion box, right? Like, and and I say this a lot. Like, diffusion to me is kind of like a magic box as to how it operates uh, within this, and so it's very, it's very. Um not not surprising to me that it ends up being a diffusion box that we get. I mean, then so hello world, and then you can see here again the closest closer to one to zero, so one point zero zero, one point zero zero, and then here's the uh, it's beautiful, right? I mean, I, like uh, it's matching one hundred percent. Like there's zero deviation here. Uh, it is able to just match exactly what the sentence is, and then so this is uh, we, we are able to in this instance what you're looking at is I encoded hello world into a simulation beam uh, and then this is our uh, light beam and then this is the encoding and the decoding right so embedding it and then decoding it um, and then with 100% perfect accuracy so uh, I can encode hello world to light uh, and and no problem there right uh, and then so next experiment is, is can I like so this is like I mean it, it, it's kind of trivial to think about but so this is like uh, only this is not splitting the beam right um, and then so splitting the beam is harder to do like like so this right if we we take it like this where we have a left side of the beam and a right side of the beam 
can I do that? And then so I do hello, hello world and good morning. Um, and then my very first test, it, it required some tweaking, right? Um, and then I got it up to, so you can see here, it's not 100%, it's uh, 99, it point, uh, 99.55%, uh, basically, and 99.5% is what you see here. And you can just see like the slightest bits of deviation uh, within the similarity matrices, like uh, that little bits of blue poking out here, right? Because it's 99.55 and 99.50. But uh, still, it's like I'm mean, almost 100% perfect accuracy, and it, it comes out as "Hello World" and "Good Morning." Um, and then, so last and final test within this: Can I actually split it into four? So, "Hello World," "Good Morning," "How are you?" and "See you later." Uh, and, and then, so uh, essentially, build this out, right? And then, uh, build out. Uh, in this instance, I need to beef up. I, I beef up the projection grid and make it quite a lot more significant because the projection grid is having to. Uh, Project locking into four different streams is essentially uh, what it ends up do being and doing, right? Uh, and then by doing these beef ups, like I, I get it, like to 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 a better result than I can with the split beam, right? Um, so uh, 99.79, at 99.79, at 99.81, and 99.76, which is higher than 99.5 and 99.55. So uh, pretty good here, right? And you can see there's there's less blue sticking out uh, on these, uh, and then so that's kind of uh, where you can tell and, and where this. Ends up right so here it is um full embedding and encoding into into light um and then this is also available on my github here via my github repository uh and then so here's the full github repo with a bunch deeper explanation um as to the concepts what what exact concepts it's pulling from kind of the um examples and the results here uh and then the um research present like the, the fields that this could be utilized for so symbolic beam transmission protocols uh, photo pho photonic nlp systems which is like to me the biggest aspect like and that's one million percent uh why i'm fully open sourcing this right i'm hoping that someone makes uh this and turns it into like a uh, a light-based nlp model or a light-based ai model if you do like reach out to me like like please reach out to me uh and then topological symbolic memory geom geometry based ai architectures and semantic compression for uh low bandwidth systems lots of potential here uh literally writing to light right that's i mean uh a lot of stuff that you can do with writing to light and a lot more like uh you can actually you can compress stuff writing to light right? but there's so so much more that you can do within this again like so my stance on that right i want to admit to carve out anything that's a small sliver <laughs> and then this is a too big of a piece of a cake for me to carve out of a small sliver like i would rather uh, open source to the world and have the world be uh, having full access to being able to write to light if you can do it here's the here's the the collab notebook the GitHub repository. Again, this is free, MIT licensed, open source to the world. Like, go have at it, go ham. And it's based on this this research, my own research into these areas, exactly what I've been talking to you about on this channel for a long time now. And if you would pay actual attention to quantum physics and quantum mechanics, then there you go. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how else to, and more uh, similarly, like how else to explain that overall. Uh, if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.